Hi, my name is Janet Skinner. Sometimes in life we need a purpose to continue. And back in the early 1990s, I was looking for a reason to live, if you like. Um, just happened by accident one day that I saw that Jibung Station, which is in Queensland, was going to be demolished and replaced. So I decided to paint it. And during the 1990s, I painted 104 railway scenes and that kept me going. As I sat on the platform and railway sidings, old people would come over and speak to me and tell me about life in the good old days. These were elderly people. It transpired that many of them were born in the early 1900s. I wrote down their names and phone numbers and I went back and interviewed them. There's a series of some 35 railway tapes that I'm making of the interviews that I recorded in New South Wales and Queensland. I'm not a journalist. I've got no background training in interviewing. And I really hope you enjoy these films. Um, I hope they bring laughter to many and insight into as what life used to be like. And please bear with me. I had fun doing them and I hope you have fun listening to them. Thank you so much. May this new retired station master of Linden Station. Yes. Okay. Um, what year did you start at Linden Station? Um, approximately 1953. Right, 1953. In the July 1953. And you retired in 1982. 1982. Okay. All right. Um, where would you like to start? Well, actually, I was at Calliope before I came. Calliope? Yeah. Where's Calliope? That was on the line from Gladstone to Monto. Right. It was the first little siding, little country township. And I went there in 1950, and I left there in the February 1950, and I left there in the July 1953. Right. It was a lovely little station, and the people were very nice, very good to me, but I had to go somewhere so my boys could get secondary education. Right. Start, maybe go back maybe a few years and, and maybe tell me how, how you got into the railway in the first place. Well, my husband died in the October 1949. We were at Collinsville and he was an assistant station master there. So I came back to Townsville and stayed with my mother and father and I went to the Townsville general manager, told him I was interested in a job. He asked me what I thought I could do and I told him I was capable of running a station because I'd done bookkeeping work before I got married. So they offered me Calliope. Right. Was it a normal thing for a woman in those days to... Yes. Right. The railway, I think they're much the same now. The railway at that time a sort of family conscious. See, my husband had been working for the railway since he was a young boy. Right. And um, there's quite a few women. They had them as cleaners of carriages or on the stations. Right. And I was lucky I got the little station at Calliope. What was your husband's name? George Richard Dunstan. Right. And did he start off as a lead, lead porter, did he? Yes. Right. In Townsville. Right. That's really, Actually, his grandparents was, um, the grandfather was the traffic inspector of Townsville. Right. So, sort of they've been in the railway most of their life then, yes. the family. Yeah. Where did his grandfather originate from, do you know? England. Came from England? Yes. What area? Do you know what part? Cornwall. Cornwall. Okay, and your mum, um, so, uh, your mum, was she English too or was she Australian? 
She was born in Australia of natural born German parents. Mm. Mm. My father was born in England. Mm. So was you um, one of how many children? One of five girls. Yeah, all girls. They never got a boy. They gave up after five. <laughs> and did you have any children? And me? Yeah. I had two boys. Two boys. And did they, did they work in the railway too? The youngest one does. Right. And still does. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Do you work in the railway? No. No. This is purely uh, something that I'm doing on my own. Oh. Tell you a little bit about what I've, I've done. I started painting railway stations in 1992 and started off, which was my then local railway station at Jigo. Yeah. And that was my first painting. And Queensland Rail told me a lot of, of a lot of other stations that were going to be demolished and replaced. So I started painting those. And I've completed over 60 works now that are actually finished, as well yeah. as lots and lots of sketches and rough work. But, um, and, and I've got to the stage now where I'm really, really interested in the actual history of them and people's memories of life on the railway yeah. and how, how times have changed and, and the stories of um, things in those areas. So, okay, so you decided to move down to Lindham so your sons could get an education, was that? Sort well, of there was a school at Calliope right. and then he went up to grade eight. Right. And um, when we came down here, my children were about six and nine. There's no good waiting until they got to the age of a secondary education. They had to look at it beforehand. Yeah. So I got Lindham and of course there was a school at Lindham that was built there after I arrived. And they finished their education at Wyndham High School. So that was quite a big move for you on your own, wasn't it? Yes. yes. Uh, Did you... Did they just say, did you could the transfer have been anywhere? Or was it just one that was available? No, I put in for the job at Lindham. Right. And I got the job. Did you know anything about Lindham or did you know anybody from the area? It was no. just the name? No. Did you come and have a look first or you just took a chance? No, I just took a chance. And where did you live when you got here? The house was there then. What house was that? The railway house. Oh, the railway house. And it was in, um, nearly directly opposite the station then. Right. That part of the house. This, um, this one here? Yes. It's like an old wooden Queensland. Yes. It? Raised right off the ground. See, then they shifted that down because they wanted to put down the line to Fisherman Island. Right. And then after they shifted it, they demolished it. Right. That was a shame. So you were there a few years then. Was you there all the time? Two yes. years retired. Yeah. From 1953 to 1982. Right. Do you think it had always been there, or do you think it was moved there when you... I believe, from what I was told, that that house didn't have this little bit, on which is the kitchen at the back, and it was on a low-set house. Right, and it was raised on the stone. Raised up. Yes. And then uh, they added this bit as a kitchen with a little veranda in, from the house to the kitchen, which they filled in later on, made an extra room. But that was all done before I came. Right. It's what the people tell me. Yes. So what was your day-to-day -day duties, if you like, of running Lyndon Station? Well, when I first came there, I wasn't under a 40-hour week. And I was working. I'd start about half past six in the morning, walk to seven o'clock at night. Saturdays and Sundays, I got paid the penalty race. But the rest of the week I didn't. So you worked all those hours? Yes. Yeah, it was a lot, wasn't it? And then there was a big argument about the working hours of a few of the stations. One was Rumpcorn and my station. And we ended up being made a 40 hour a week. So who did your job in you wasn't doing it? Did you get some help then or? There used to be a lady that came on the Tuesday. First of all, I only got, say, Tuesday afternoon or as time went on, I got all of Tuesday off. Right. And when you were when you got there, were the railway were there railway gates there or the gates had been there, but they'd been taken away. Right. So they had electric signals then, did they? Le electric gates then, did they? They didn't have the boom gates then. Right. The boom gates came in oh about three or four years before I retired. All right. So you just took your chance over the railway line, did you? Yep. Right. 
And did you have any, were there any signals to operate in Linden? No. No? Okay. When I went there, it was just a low set platform about this high. Oh. And then they, while I was there, they raised the platform up to the present height that it is now. So when you were there, they would still have been using steam trains, wouldn't they? Yes. Yes, that's right. So did your station carry water in that, did they? No. no. They used to get their water at Manly. Right. And I think Cannon Hill was the next one if they needed it. They were noisy things, weren't they? But you get used to them. Yeah. I never heard them. The only time I ever heard them was if they were on strike and didn't run. Yeah. It's funny, I started off living in, in a house, in the second house when I was married. I first got married, um, was by a railway line. And then uh, another house we bought, which was also a studio, that was built, there was a train tunnel about 100 feet below. Yeah. And you could hear the rumble of, of the train. And you, you didn't, do you know, the only time it used to bother me was Christmas Day when they didn't run. Yes. And the lack of the noise would keep you awake at night. Isn't that silly? No, well, that's just what I said to you. The only time I heard them was when they didn't run. Yes. They were like, um, when I was first married, we went down to Wilmington, which is on the line, it's about 17 miles, the north side of Bowen, and the railway built a cottage for us there. And when I first went there, we were living in a railway carriage with an iron kitchen detached. He was living in a railway carriage? An old one. Gee. He slept in that, and it was right by the side of the line. Gee. And this, this is when you first got married, was it? Yes. Gee. Well, that's amazing, isn't it? You, you lived by the railway line in a railway carriage. That's because there was no accommodation? Not right? at the time. Right. And they built the house for us. Yeah. It would be noisy then sleeping right next to the railway, was it? Oh, not really, because before I was married, I only lived a street away from the where the railway workshops used to be in Townsville. So you mean you was used to the noise? Yes, the noise of the trains. Yes. Yeah. And you had a kitchen in the carriage and things like that? No, they had a little iron room they gave us, and that was our kitchen. Right. Was it cold in the winter then? Does it get cold oh, up there? Not really. Not really. No. Not up there in North Queensland. Right. Anyway, we, was, we originally we was talking when you was back down here in Linda. So, um, would you say there's been any changes from 1953 at Lindham Station to the way it's run now? Yes. How, how has it changed? Well, for a start, they've got the computers in the office, right. which they didn't have then. What do, you, what do you think about computers? Have you ever worked one, or what do you think? Well, I suppose if I was working there and I'd had to learn, learn how to do it, I'd have had to do it, but I'm glad I didn't have to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the computer makes everything easier, doesn't it? Yes, I know a young lass on the uh, North Railway Station and she showed me what they had to do. Because the last year I was working, she relieved me at Linden. And I said, thank God I'm not working for the railway now. Mm. Did, you, did you have any plants or gardens on the, on the railway? No, I didn't have time. Because I had children to look after and and your job. Yes, it must have been quite difficult. It was a bit difficult. Did you have to do like night evening work too, did you? Mm -hmm. Up to about seven o'clock until this 40 hour. What was okay. you doing? Just tearing tickets at that time of night? Or what, what would you be involved in later Just night? selling tickets and collecting them. Yeah. 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 That'd be quite a big thing, trying to cook for the children and get them ready for school and yeah. everything, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would be. Oh, they weren't too bad. No normal kids. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, the station hasn't altered a great deal over the years, has it? Well, it has slightly. It's been raised, the platform's been raised, like you said. Yeah, yeah. see, this photo here is with the platform raised. Here. Yeah. yeah. That's the platform raised. Yes. As I said before, it was only about this high when I went there. Yeah. Mavis, what year was you born? 1917. 1917. I've been speaking to Harriet Johnson. Um, did, did you know Harriet? She was born in 1906. I was talking to her a little while ago. She Where was she at? Um, hold on one minute. 
Yeah, actually, when I was talking, I think it was to Eric, he was saying that there have been a number of accidents around the Lindham Station. Oh, yes, there have been. Do you remember one at all? Yeah, one chap we got hit. He was in the car and um, he had the wireless going mm. and he didn't stop and he ran in front of the train. Mm. And the train just turned him around mm. and he went, but it was facing this way and he was going to go over the line this way. And I was so glad to see him open the door and step out the mm. car. Oh. It wasn't her. He lives down here. Right. And you mentioned something earlier about somebody on a bike. Tell me a little bit about yes, that. Yes, this man normally parked his push bike by the side of the station at Lindham. But this morning it was drizzly rain. So we took it over to the Wyndham side and put it underneath the waiting shed there. He came back onto the platform and I didn't see it actually happen because I'd been talking to a man at the door of the office. Someone came for a ticket. And when I came back, this man said to me, don't look out, a man's just got killed by the train. See, at that time, there were two trains crossed there. They both, one to Brisbane got there about 20 to 8, the one to Wyndham was at exactly the same time. He was in a hurry to get over mm. and he saw the train. You don't reckon he heard the train? No, I'm sure he did. Why do you think he didn't hear the train? Because you get that used to them, you don't hear them. I can believe that and I reckon you're right in what you say. You just get That's so quite used true. To, yeah, you just get so used to them. Yeah. yeah. I can imagine. That's sad, isn't it? Yes, yeah. it was quite sad. He was nice. So yeah. what year would that have been? Pretty early oh, on in your career yes. there, would it? Yes. Yeah, okay. I guess I wouldn't have to say what year that was. What was the railway, what did your station, was it all passengers or did you have any pineapples that, coming and going or whatever? When I first went there, I used to send some milk away. Milk? Yes. And we had, we used to send parcels away. But as time went on, they cut all that out. And they had to go to either win them. I went in the centre. Right. And the milk, I think, stopped anyhow. So it was mainly passengers? Yes, yeah, it became milk. just passengers. Right. No, I see, yeah. Um, I was a uh, photo of the men that dra drove the last steam train. Right. And that the driver was Herb Waters and the fireman was Tom Troy. Right. Yeah, I've got the name of Troy in my book. They were railway people, weren't they? Yes. They live in this area, do they? Yes. Yes. Okay. Matter of fact, Tom and I. So, um, Mavis, you left the railway in 1982? Yeah, on the 22nd of November 1982. Did you have a bit of a party? Well, my family gave me, yeah. Did they? Anything with the railway or? Yeah, the railway just gave me a nice check. Oh, that was nice. <laughs> you didn't say no to Because I didn't collect any of my long service. And I wasn't in the super and things like that. So, um, have you travelled on the train much now? Oh yes, I have a, a pass because I have had over 30 years service with the department. Oh, well, that's very nice. And I can travel anywhere in Queensland on that pass. And interstate, it's quite a fare, just like, well, I think the pension is a half fare, but I get a quarter fare. And does it still bring, to sometimes if you see an old steam train, does it still bring back a little bit of nostalgia for you? Well, we usually stand and look at it as it goes past. Yeah, it brings back a few memories. Yeah. yeah. Your I first think. memories of a steam loco, maybe, were they, they were always very frightening machines to me. I don't know if it was just me, but I always used to think they were great big, whoa, noisy things and hot and... You know, they had a nasty habit of... Hissing. You actually got a lot of steam. Yeah. When you look down your frock, they have all little black specks. Did they? Wouldn't come out either. <laughs> we don't have that to worry about nowadays, no. do we? No, not with the electric yeah. train. And so now you rest and have it over your leisure. Yeah. Maybe. Oh, well. It's been very nice talking to you, Mavis. It's all right, Jenny. Thank you very much.